our version of a Merce Cunningham celebration, and you're going to see and hear why. Uh, we have been graced over these last years to have Melissa Too Good in our midst. Melissa is. <laughs> Melissa was a member of Merce's last company. She worked so closely with him, and she carries on his legacy. And she carries it on in so many different ways, beyond even the Merce Cunningham repertory, as a contemporary model dancer of a dancer open and available to try new things and to bring the spirit of Merce to everything she does. And we've been so lucky here in Vail over the last years that she started staging uh, new works, uh, staging works by Merce for us, bringing together dancers who otherwise might not have the chance. Melissa also uh, has danced on our stage with her baby Hudson, who's just leaving the room for a moment, but he'll be back. Uh, both, uh, well, let's just let you explain it all of it. But I want to introduce Melissa. He'll tell you uh, a little bit about what you're going to see today. Uh, and it is the Merce Cunningham Centennial, which is why we're taking this opportunity to gather you all here. And welcome to everybody watching on Instagram Live. Uh, we're so grateful to all of the dancers and the musicians who are throwing down on this. Uh, so join me in saying thank you to Melissa, who put all of this together. Thank you for coming to our informal open rehearsal in the tent. Um, so the piece I chose to share with Vail this year is called Antique Meat. It was, it premiered in 1958. So last year I staged an excerpt from Scenario, which is from the 90s, so I really think it shows some of the range Merce has um, in his many years of artistic development. So we have about an eight and a half minute excerpt. Um, the piece, like I said, uh, premiered in the 50s. And so it was really just after he finished dancing with Martha and um, training with Lincoln Kirstein and his vaudeville education. Um, so the sections of the piece I chose to share, I think are the ones that are less derivative of other forms of dance and other influences he had, and really, I think, started to show already the um, possibility for complexity in space and time in his work. So, um, actually, I might do a little, throw them a curveball, like pan him up and throws us. <laughs> Can we just do the very beginning, and I'll, I'll stop you around the nine, just to kind of share what they're going through, which is very different than what is happening with the music. Um, we rehearse in silence, and so they have very strict rhythms that doesn't go with what you will hear, um, which is something Merce and John Cage really brought to the arts. So, sorry guys, is that okay? <laughs> So I'm going to count them in so that you know what they're kind of going through, when, even though you won't hear me saying it when you actually see them do. Okay, so I'll let you set the tempo. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. Yes. Um, I want to talk just for a second about the music. Melissa mentioned that Merce 
Cunningham and John Cage revolutionized and brought to the arts this kind of a collaborative uh, performance, which really is uh, independent. Independent dance from independent music, uh, to the point that what we're doing actually as an open rehearsal really was not the way it would happen, because the dancers would never actually hear the music until they were on stage. Uh, so it was uh, independent, and frankly, having the bark uh, is only is okay uh, because it's the it's the chance elements that we don't know what we're going to hear uh, and how that relates is a, is a source of wonder. Uh, so I wanted to ask our composer in residence Caroline Shaw if she'd join us for just one second, just to explain what the musicians are actually doing. Uh, as Melissa said a few days ago, we realized that we had the components with which we could actually do this live. We weren't sure, and it was a question of willingness. And I want to applaud the musicians for saying yes because. It's a thing, uh, and it very much is a bail thing. Uh, so maybe, uh, Caroline, would you explain what, what's going on back there? Sure. I, I thought I might actually just show you a little bit of one of the parts. This is a viola three part. And we, um, John Cage, some of the beauty of what he does is these beautifully notated scores with um, their squiggles and lines, and, um, and he's interested in chants. So we have all uh, randomized our pages. We selected about six of them, I think. And we change pages once Melissa gets to the top of her clock. <laughs> and so everything is, is really operating independently. And what's interesting for me as a performer and as a composer is actually to resist the urge to uh, build something or to match the dancers, but to really con be very rigorous about um, following exactly what's on the page. I'm going to leave this here. Thank you, Caroline. And then, so before we begin, I just thought I'd introduce everybody involved. Uh, Kennard Hensum from the New York City Ballet, Devin Tusher from ABT, Miriam Miller from the New York City Ballet, Savannah Green, Ballet X, Dancing Fellow, and Jacqueline Baglisi, Dance Theater, India Bradley, New York City Ballet, and Preston Shambly, New York City Ballet are our dancers, so you can see it's a very veiled mix of people that would ordinarily never have the chance to work together. And on piano, we have Kurt Crowley, music director of Hamilton, and pianist and music director of the festival. We have uh, Colin Jacobson, Nicholas Kords, uh, I'm going to skip over Kate for a minute, Michael Nicholas, and Johnny Yamsman, Brooklyn Ryder, Kate Davis, indie rock singer, musician extraordinaire, Caroline Shaw, you just met, composer, oh my god, everything, musician, uh, and from Juilliard Jazz, Abdias Armenteros, Noah Halpern, and Jeffrey Miller. So we've got a whole range of people. Oh, and we left out on, on stage right Jared Angle from the New York City Ballet. Okay, so here is our Merce Cunningham celebration of Antique Meat excerpt, choreography by Merce Cunningham, music by John Cage, uh, conducted by our heroine hero, Melissa Tuca.
on this again and have this moment. It was beautiful, uh, and I think we've mem memorialized it now on film. Uh, but as part of this celebration of Merce Cunningham, we've also had uh, Melissa's husband is an extraordinary artist, uh, Ken Harris III, and you've seen his works around town and in uh, Manor Vale. So we're going to ask Ken to speak for a minute or two about that work, and then we're going to have some cake uh, in honor of Merce's uh, 100th birthday uh, in a true celebration. So, but, but Ken Harris. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Um, I was very fortunate this year to have um, Vail Dance and Vail Valley Foundation brought my work from the Merce Cunningham tour. Um, I'm not sure if you all are familiar, but after Merce's death, they decided to launch a two-year legacy tour. So it was a 50-city world tour. So with my relationship with Melissa and just under, you know, seeing the daily life of what a dancer goes through, and the idea of they just lost, the dancers were losing their mentor, they lost their mentor, they were, the company was closing after the two-year world tour, so they were all going to lose their jobs. I just thought this is a story that needs to be told. So I asked the dancers to follow them on the two-year world tour and documented the whole tour through drawings and paintings. But not necessarily of them on stage, it was more behind the scenes. So really the dancers' way of life. So I wanted to actually sort of Dance and performance only exist in time and space, so I wanted to create a marker for the effort of the dancers, so that I created over 70 drawings, 23 paintings, and um, some of them are here on display for you now. We also, um, for Antique Meat, there are two tank tops that the men wore in the duet. Um, originally, a dancer from the company did them, so I asked Ken to reimagine them for the piece for a veil. So you can have a look at those up close too. And after cake, there's another rehearsal in here. So if you guys want to um, follow Ken just in here into Manabelle, you can see some of the prints and paintings in person. Okay. So now we're going to have cake. Should we sing Happy Birthday to Merce? Should we do that? We have a little cage-like Happy Birthday. <laughs> oh, this is great. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm not singing in the mic, but we're all going to join in. All right. 